So, Sightseers, which is the new movie by Ben Wheatley. I know that you're a big fan of Kill List because you, what you said, you, there's nothing that you like more than a movie that really, really upsets and worries you. So the story with Sightseers is, and this is how it's described itself, a ginger-bearded man and an angry woman head off uh, out of Birmingham on an erotic odyssey in a caravan. Okay? Caravan... It's not in- promising. <laughs> an erotic odyssey in a caravan. Uh, an erotic odyssey in a caravan. Um, heading off, caravanning holiday of the British landscape, both physical, geographical and psychological. She has an overbearing mother. He envisages himself as a sort of Kerouacian author. They are both afflicted by a very British form of madness. Is a clip. Dear Mum, I'm not coming home. Yorkshire is lovely, not like you said at all. They can smile and they do sell my pasta sauce. The caravan bed is quite short, but Chris is a sensitive lover. Hope you can be happy for me. Love, Tina. Right, well, they've only got two spots left. One by the Dingley Dell and one by the Bugs. He's going for Dingley Dell. Chris, I want Dingley Dell. I'm going to get this bloody Dingley Dell. Can't we go oh, around Just them? hold on, I'm going to do it. Go we'll around them. You. Go around. Go that way. I will. Just go, wait there. Just wait go there. around just, it. Okay, hold on. Oh, oh Chris! Don't look at them, Chris. Just don't look at them. <laughs> 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 you! I am the best. Get in. So that kind of gives you the tone of it. It's the story... Have you ever seen the Mike Lee thing, Nuts in May? No which is, I think, one of Mike Lee's greatest works about you know, two people going off camping and being fantastically insular. What sort of caravan is it, by the way, that they have? In, in Sightseers? Yeah. I'm not a caravan enthusiast, so... Is I it a, sta- a static caravan or a touring caravan? Can I just say a static caravan is a house? Well, no, it's just a caravan that you put down. You put down the steadies and you stay there. No, but it, it, no, a, sta- a caravan by nature is on wheels, Simon. So therefore, there is no such thing as a static caravan. If you're in a caravan when it's moving, it means the caravan is on tow. What, what, what the, are you talking the, about? The static caravan community may well rise up as one and say, "Yeah, what is? What do you think we're staying in then, chum?" Because they all talk like that. It's what caravan- are you talking about? Permanent caravan, caravans that don't move. It's. It- do you not open your eyes when you go... Oh, it doesn't matter. No. Anyway. Okay, this fine. Is a, this is a short touring caravan. It's a caravan. Okay. Right, it's a caravan. I mean, it's like your small house on wheels. Right, that, and the, who was it? Some, somebody famously said, oh, it's such a British thing, caravanning. Only the British would go off on tour and put their house on wheels behind them. Is there an awning? An no, awning. An awning involved. There, there may be, but I feel like you're focusing... Yes, I suppose there, there is... Yes, there's sort of tension. Kind of you know, is there a fridge? There was it quite an I, you know, I wasn't looking at that because as it was tipping over into serial killing, I wasn't okay. really worried about oh, right, the refrigeration okay. of the food. So the story Let's is, I, that. honestly, you and the, you know. I'm interested okay, in the details. Fine. Okay. So this, basically, because uh, Alice and Steve Robin, who are the two leads, wrote this and they started off doing it as a sort of stand-up act in which they would do, the act w- was that they would be talking as if they were on a caravan and they'd start referring just very casually in a very offhand way to murders, what they may have committed along the way. Ben Wheatley then comes into this and turns it into a film. Because see Ben Wheatley's um, back catalogue, if you look at Down Terrace, which actually just been has either just been or is just being re-released, and then Kill This, and he has a background in comedy. Actually, he comes out of making TV comedy and doing stuff that he describes having a YouTube sensibility, being very influenced by that sort of weird reality TV thing. Something looks grotty and strange, therefore we think it's real. And the thing that he's always done is to effectively put put two genres together i mean whether it's in the case of down terrace which is which looks like a kind of you know it's a gangster movie but it looks like a gangster movie as if it's directed by mike lee or he, although his he always says that his big influence is alan clark i mean alan clark has that whole thing about holding everything just slightly too long and making you feel very uncomfortable about things in the case of kill list you know we described it, i said there was nigel floyd said that when he saw kill List, he found the atmosphere of it so oppressive that he thought at one point he was going to have to leave because he couldn't remember the last time a horror film had you know felt that uh, that intimidating 
thing. In the case of this, it is essentially nuts in May, but the madness is pushed further and the characters tip over into homicide. So as they meet people on, on, their, uh, on their tours, because their insular worldview is so insular and because they actually don't care about anybody other than themselves, it tips over into murder. So it is a black comedy, very, very black comedy. And the question with black comedy is always, can you maintain a balance between the laughter and the shocks because both things have to be there in order for it to work properly and it's very very difficult to get right and certainly what happens with Ben Wheatley is what he brings to it is the sense that when you do get the the explosions of violence they are yes they're broadly comic at least in the beginning but they're also nasty and there is a real nastiness underlying it the posters for the film are interesting because they say laugh out loud you know funniest comedy of the year this that, and the other it's actually mis-selling the movie to some extent I, mean, I understand why but it's it of course it is a black comedy but it there is an awful lot of brooding strange darkness under there and what he has brought to the equation is that the edginess is really there so you do feel uncomfortable i mean at the very beginning of it when they start tipping over into this kind of you know because it's guys dropping litter all over the place remember that thing in serial mom i mentioned serial mom before the film with kathleen turner directed by john waters and the tagline was well she meant well and the whole plot was you know she's so cross about people failing to rewind videotapes before referring returning them to the to the video shop that she goes um on a crazy killing spree you know, but as John Ward said, but hey, she meant well. It's a good tagline. So th it is. It's a very good tagline. So the balancing act between the sort of the humorous, quirky, strange, you know, it's a very British humour of the people that will go on tour whilst taking their house with them is there. But it only works if you are also genuinely appalled when things start to become really nasty. And what Ben Wheatley does, and he's very, he's very specific about this, is you're kind of a few steps behind them. At first, you're sort of, okay, you know, you, you're sort of, in, your sympathies are engaged, although it does actually encapsulate for me that idea that there is a real madness involved in what they're doing, even before it tips over into violence. But your sympathies are engaged so that when things start to get nasty, you are kind of implicated in it. What I'm trying to say, therefore, is that to say that it's a great knockabout comedy is not enough. It is more than that, because what it's doing is, I mean, again, I've talked about you know, that idea of British Gothic with great expectations. There is some of that here. As they get further and further away from the rules of, uh, you know, acceptable behaviour, they go off into these more and more remote and more and more cinematic landscapes. And you just look at bits of Britain, you think, blimey, you know, you know Britain is qu quite breathtaking in some places. But they do sort of go off into this sort of primeval area whereby society is all left behind, all of which seems like a very highfalutin way of talking about what is essentially nuts in may with axes and that is what it is but for me because it has those other things it didn't the gag didn't run out of steam it would be possible to look at it and go okay the gag is they're on a camping holiday and they kill people and that's not going to fulfill a whole drama there has to be more to it and i think there is more to it and i think the more to it is that actually some of it is quite unpleasant and quite disturbing and quite worrying but in exactly the way that it's meant to be i mean here it's I do think that balancing act is a very difficult thing to do because obviously comedy can work against horror and horror can work against comedy. And at the back of it all, you do have constantly this vision of Nuts in May, which incidentally, if you've never seen, I know you haven't seen Nuts in May, but you must see it because it is one of the most sublime pieces of, of British drama. I think it's you know Mike Lee's greatest work. It is just fantastic. It's up there with Withnell and I. But what, who should I see it with? If if I change my plans for tonight, who could I who could I watch it with? With the family, whole, whole family, yeah. With the young kids, yeah. Gather, everyone, everyone around, Granny. yeah. Everyone, everyone, because it's one of those things that you you watch it through you know through through your fingers because it's so painful, but in a really sort of funny. I mean, Mike Lee has often said, actually, I've you know what I always wanted to be was a clown. That is his thing that he's comedic. Alan Clark, on the other hand, which is the as I said, the great influence from on, the Hollies. No, from 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 Alan Clark. I just say it wasn't Alan Clark from the Hollies. Go on, no, okay. I'm who is, a who is, ben, who is ben Wheatley's great influence? You know, did Scum and things like that, and we can work with Danny Boyle, and you know, and his whole thing was brutal reality, and you know, bringing all this reality into your front room, and 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 the trick of it was always holding everything slightly longer than you wanted, so that you felt uncomfortable. You didn't feel that there was this nice rhythm of things being cut. You felt that you were always slightly implicated in the drama, and I think what you get in this is those two things brought together melded with a story that as i said came from a, a sort of stand-up act of two people doing this you know talking comedically towards each other but talking about dark murder in the background and it all adds up to something which is a very blackly comic weirdy impressive movie but i don't think that just saying it's funniest laugh out loud comedy of the year does it 
does it fair that it that's not right it's not just that it's much nastier than that and i don't say nasty in a bad way it's of much course. nastier than that i think we know that 